Noah, he knew about animals. Oh, yes, he did. And uh, he's mentioned in the Bible, which I think are oral history. So I think it did happen. There was a flood. There's flood stories mentioned in the Bible, mentioned outside the Bible. We saw the tsunami. We know they happened. Now, the big point is, did God tell him to make a boat or did Noah just use his captain common sense? Because a number of us, if we were somewhere where it was raining and 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 raining, and, raining, and we had a big pile of wood, <laughs> some of us might put two and two together and go, I'm going to make a bloody boat. <laughs> Others might go, I'm going to make a hairdresser. I'm going to build a monkey emporium. I'm going to build a big set of wooden shoes <laughs> that would fit a giant. <laughs> but he made a boat. Oh, he was quite sensible. And what did he put on the boat? His family. What else? Animals. Which animals? Any he could find. Did he put two of every animal in the world on the boat? No. How can I be so sure? Try it. <laughs> Just try it. It's impossible. And there is such a word as impossible. You can't, it's impossible to eat the Himalayas. <laughs> you know, there's such a word as can't. Well, try eating the bloody Himalayas. Oh, I got full after about two mountains. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to get through that. So he was there. And he built this boat and, you know, just trying to get everything on there would be a nightmare. And it had to be everything, two, from two dung beetles up to two giant squid. All of them. All the fish had to be there because we know they were bad, some of them. Sharks are bad. You know, very few good sharks. Very few sharks say, we found a child <laughs> who was swimming about, having a bad time. We were going to eat him, but we thought it is not our way anymore <laughs> since the Geneva Convention on sharks in the agreement that sharks made with humans. We took his leg, but that is our trade. <laughs> we call him Stumpy. <laughs> or Thumper. I think his name is Kenneth. <laughs> so Noah would be there saying, all right, Margaret, Margaret, just stuff them all over the boat. Put what, lash one giant squid to the roof. Just do it. It's raining, Margaret. It doesn't matter. <laughs> just put them anywhere. F shove them in cupboards. A giant squid sticking out of cupboards going, there's no towels. <laughs> Is she there? No towels. Giant squid diary day one. Got to the boat. Everything rather damp, must inform TripAdvisor. <laughs> Seem to be running out of ink. <laughs> Met a number of animals, interesting ones. Cat, dog, squirrel, a mouse. I will eat them later. <laughs> Can't find Horace. Think he's lashed to the roof. And the whole two-by-two two thing doesn't work. Two-by-two two animals. All right, here we go. Kids are going to get them up two-by-two. Two, two. Two, uh, two tigers, two cats, two dogs, two fish, two rabbits, two squirrels, two llamas, two blue things, uh, two zebras. How many is that? Uh, that uh, so far, uh, two tigers, Dad. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, no. What happened? They just seemed to... It became a Wendy's all-you-can-eat kind of... Do we have a psychotherapist on board? Because I think I need to readjust after that. It wouldn't work. Lions and tigers eat everything. It's like putting students on a boat with a load of cake mix, isn't it? <laughs> it would just be a munching fest. I've been up close to a lion, and they, they, they just do that. And after 40 days and 40 nights of rain, which is 40 days of rain, isn't it? The nights are implicit, for God's sake. It's a month and a bit of rain. Don't drag it out. Just, oh, 40 lunchtimes and 40 afternoon teas. <laughs> just padding out the Bible. After that period of time, they'd be there from the Bible on the bit of land, saying, we're here as the ark makes landfall. What a historic day. God's plan has worked. The ark has made it with two of everything. And here they come. There's uh, Noah and his family first trying to get a wedding. <laughs> oh, they're rushing away there, probably meeting some friends. Late for a dinner appointment, and uh, lions and tigers, there they go. Well, they're chasing up. I've made friends already, I suppose. And uh, no one else at the moment must be uh, packing. Um, <laughs> just getting their things together. What a wonderful, glorious day. Oh, here comes a, uh, it's a squirrel. He's just running out there. Mr. Squirrel, how did it go? It was a nightmare, man. <laughs> Don't go there. It was, it was crazy. They killed everything. Those stripy bastards, they killed everything, man. There's nothing there, man. It's all dead. All day, it's like a ghost ship. I, I escaped. I hid in a colander. <laughs> oh, shit. You got to write that down. The Bible it was a bad plan, man. Bad plan. <laughs> no plan. What happened to your wife? She got away. Got away in a boat with an owl and a cat. <laughs> Did they take anything with them? Yeah, they took spoons and a helicopter, a little toy one. 
and uh, a Gatling gun. <laughs> and Owl and Pussycat went to sea in a beautiful pea green boat. They took some spoons, a helicopter, and a Gatling gun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not poetry. <laughs> so, um, civilization. That's what we're about. And uh, while we're here, you know, because I don't think there's actually a reason why we're here, but while we're here, we may as well try and be civilized. Just a little bit British. Just a little bit getting up in the morning and saying, hello, how are you? Walking on. Can't stand the man myself. <laughs> it's a little bit like that. And the Egyptians and the, uh, the Egyptians and the Sumerians, they started it off. They started the ball rolling about 5,000 years ago. They said, come on, irrigation, that's a good thing. And uh, the pharaohs were going, I'm 12 years old, I could die sometime. But you're very young, so yeah, I could die, so I want to die in a pointy thing. <laughs> All right, we'll make one about head height, a mile high. <laughs> Bloody 12 year olds. <laughs> come on, lads, cut some rock. And it was all kind of sandy, and uh, they worshipped Ra, the sun god Ra. They had a song, Ra, hurrah, for Ra. He's up there near the stars, but they're not there. They've gone somewhere else, and he is there. It's up there. It's quite hot. It's hot. It makes all our ground crappy, unless we have irrigation. La, 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 Ra, Ra. There was a, I'm not sure what the song was, <laughs> but it was something in that area. And sun worshipping, the sun worshipping of the sun god, that is the circle behind Mary's head. Mary and baby G, you know they got the circle? And you grew up thinking that meant they were very, very good. Very, very, very good. And I wore the Colgate Ring of Confidence. Remember that one? <laughs> Actually, it uh, means it's sun worshipping. It was slid in behind Christianity. Christianity, hello. Because Christians worship Chris, of course. Um, <laughs> that's what it should be about. Christmas is when we remember Chris and how he so brilliantly landed on that pagan ritual of being both on, born on the 25th of December. <laughs> Once at the Christianity, there's all these pagan religions, and the Christianity went... <laughs> that seems to fit. <laughs> well, it was. And all those people, a lot of churches are built on pagan sites. So people turn up for the pagan rituals. Let's go and uh, worship on the Feast of Bingo. Oh, where the fuck did this come from? Ooh, it's not bingo anymore. It's, it's uh, Mr. Mr. Chris. Oh, let's worship him then, shall we? Whoever's here will worship. So, yeah.